even more housekeeping note, we will not have children's church today. No. You got to stay for service the whole time, John. It's going to be a, a rather short service. We, have, um, we do have some baptisms this morning, and we have a baby dedication. So this is a good time to have children to listen. Um, a lot of kids want to be baptized. I don't mind baptizing kids as long as the parents are fully on board. I forgot to put our lights on this morning. It's been quite busy this morning. All right. So I don't mind baptizing children. I, like, I typically like to see that age of 13 because that's a good age that sometimes they can understand a good moral difference between right and wrong. Baptism is not just for show, but it's to show what Jesus has did in your heart. So I, I do try to meet with parents when children do want to be baptized. So I put that out there as we do baptize children. I know a lot of people have kids that want to be baptized. We have some that are waiting. And sometimes I say, hey, just wait. Let's wait. Let's grow into that. Let's fully understand what we're doing. So I just want to put that out there. But this morning, we want to celebrate the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is not something we celebrate just because it's Easter. It's something we celebrate daily because of what he's done. So I want to open up with Psalms 34. As I said, we did that song, I Trust in God. That song was taken from Psalms 34. That has been a verse that I've really been meditating on a lot lately. It's a verse I've been making it part of my life to fully understand it, to fully embrace it. Because sometimes, let's be honest, we hear verses. How many people can hear a verse or recite the verse, but not necessarily live the verse? So just to give you an example, if I started out and said, we're going to recite the Lord's Prayer, everybody probably could. But remember, within the Lord's Prayer, Father, forgive me as I've forgiven those who sinned against me. So if you really haven't forgiven them, then what you're praying is, God, don't really forgive me either. You see, we recite verses, but we don't always understand and grasp what they're saying. So this morning, as we go through these scriptures, I want, it, I want us to embrace what the Spirit is speaking to us, that we become alive by the words that are spoken. So in Psalms 34, 3, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Easter's a great time to do that. It's a great time just to come together. Sometimes family is in town, and, and you want them to be here, and, and you gather together. We gather together to exalt his name. We gather together to magnify his name. We gather together to worship him. We gather together just to praise his precious and holy name. It's taken from Psalms 34. Watch this. This is my favorite verse. If there's any verse you could put on your refrigerator, this might be the one. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. You see, sometimes we all pray. Everybody needs something at some point in time. There comes a point in time when life kind of throws you a curveball, and you need Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, he is not a genie. He's not someone that you can just live any way you want, and then all of a sudden say, okay, God bless me. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Ask yourself this week, how much time have you spent seeking God? How much time have you spent seeking God? How much time in a month have you spent seeking God? Here's why it's important to seek God. Whether you realize it or not, we're all going to need him at some point in time. Things are going to happen, and you're going to be calling people and praying. Hey, pray for me. Hey, pray for me. I'm going through this. My brother-in-law is going through this. My sister-in-law is going through this. My mom's going through this. My kids, my grandkids, somebody's going to go through something. And you're going to be seeking God. But I like this because I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. I like to take that and say he's delivered me from all my fears, my stress, my anxiety, my frustration. Life sometimes has a way of frustrating us. 
Life sometimes has a way of scaring us. People are diagnosed with cancer. People are diagnosed with Alzheimer's. People are diagnosed with many kind of diseases. Sometimes in life, things happen, but God wants to deliver us from all of our fears. Sometimes we think, am I going to have enough money to raise my kids? Am I going to have enough money, enough money to help my grandkids? Am I going to have enough money to support my spouse? Am I going to have enough money to do the things I want to do? We often have a lot of worries, but God's saying, don't worry about tomorrow because I got it taken care of. He says, all you got to do is seek him. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's why Jesus resurrected. He resurrected that he could conquer. A lot of times we say, well, I know Jesus is going to let me go to heaven. But you know, when you look at that, Jesus conquered sin and death. You ever find yourself repeating a bad sin? You ever find yourself repeating a habit that you want to break? Sometimes we do things. I, sometimes I do things. I'll be honest. Sometimes I do things, and I don't want to do that. And I'm like, God, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to do that. You know what he says? Keep seeking me. Keep seeking me. I'll free you. If you want freed, if you have a bad habit, if you have a sin, if you have an addiction, no one enjoys bad habits, sins, and addictions because they hurt other people around us. Amen? Sometimes they hurt us. There's times I've gone to bed and I think, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to think like that. But I don't know how to stop it. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he freed me. You see, he came out of death to conquer sin and death. He beat sin that it doesn't control us, but we control it. See, Jesus gives us the power to overcome. If you find yourself wanting to overcome but struggling to overcome, I suggest to keep seeking him. Keep seeking him. Well, how do I seek him? Well, you're doing it this morning. You're here. You're here. You get plugged in. You hear the word. Maybe you start coming to Wednesday night Bible study. I'm going to tell you what this Wednesday night Bible study, it blew my mind. It literally blew my mind because we all sat and talked about things we're trying to overcome. We all sat and talked about ways to overcome. We all talked about, we all talked about the same struggle. And it was so amazing to see that everybody's facing pretty much the same things. And I can guarantee you this, in the next Bible study or two, we're all going to sit and talk about how we did overcome. And we're going to talk about how we got the victory. We're going to talk about how it was hard, but we sought him. How did we seek him? We did a week, Holy Week fast. I was touched to hear some people's fasting. I was touched. We had a young kid, probably in his 20s. He took part. He says, I want to fast. He said, I want to fast. And they took him out to eat, and he says, nope, it's not on my fast. He was committed. He was devoted. I was encouraged. I'm like, no way. It's just amazing to see how many people want to walk with God, how many people want to be delivered, how many people want to be free. You see, like I said, we get down to it. <clears throat> it's not what we do. It's what he has done. You see, Jesus conquered death in the grave. He came out of it so we could be free. There's times I've had bad habits. I've had many bad habits. I think I had probably every bad habit in the world just about. I had every vice that you could imagine, every struggle, addictions. I had to fight. They were pulling me in. They were hard. But he gave me the victory. He said, because of what I did, I'm going to empower you with the Holy Spirit that you can overcome. If I do not overcome, it's my fault. And sometimes, how many people say, well, the devil's after me? You ever use that? Well, the devil's after me. Pray for me. The devil's after me. No, I don't think sometimes he's after us. We're just not seeking God. We're playing around. You know, you can say you're seeking him, but unless you sit down and open your Bible, and when I say open your Bible, I'm not saying read it. Try to live it. We all know, turn the other cheek. But sometimes we think we can get the last word in. 
we sometimes say, well, you don't know who I am. And we sometimes want to justify why we think we can say what we want to say. But yet, turning the other cheek. And if you've been coming to church, I'm going to throw this verse out. I, I, I use it a lot. <clears throat> In the Bible, it says, do all things without complaining and murmuring. Whoa, wait a minute. Sometimes that's all we do is complain and murmur. Oh, I don't like what they did. I don't like what they did. I don't like what he said. I don't like what she said. I don't like what they look like. I don't like what they did. I don't like the food that I got. I don't like how they waited on me. I don't like what the government's doing. I don't like what the schools are doing. I don't like what that church is doing. We sometimes just complain, complain, complain. But we say, well, holy God, he loves me. Well, no, he's saying, I want you to do one simple thing. Do all things without complaining and murmuring. So what should I do? Pray and give him praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears, my stress, my anxiety, and my troubles. Does that mean I'm not going to have troubles? No, I'm going to have them. It was funny. My wife and I was talking yesterday. And I asked her, I said, do you think there's ever a point when you say, God, help me with this? Because if, if we listen to a song, in that song it says, God, do it. Only you can do it. And I said, do you think there's ever a problem? God can say, no, I can't even do that one. And we laughed about it because we know that he can do everything. He knows he can give us the power to overcome any addiction, any thought process, any negativity that we're faced with, any struggles. That's what Jesus is all about. That's why he overcome the grave so we can live. He didn't do it just so we can gather once a year and praise him. He did it that tomorrow I can live the way he wants. He did it so next month I can live the way he wants. He did it so when I need that job, he steps up and helps me out. He did it so when I get lonely and I'm depressed and I need a friend, there he sends somebody my way. He did it so I don't have to worry. He did it so I can keep living. Amen? And sometimes we lay in a state of defeat. And he's saying, well, you're not seeking me. You talk about me, but you don't seek me. Sometimes we do more talking about him than we do seeking him. I had a pastor tell me once, if people was going around with that neon sign, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, are they trying to convince you or themselves? Because if you're living it, it just happens. It just happens. So when I get to thinking about what Jesus has done, when I start thinking about Easter, I wanted to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. He says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before you welcomed it then, and you still stand for a minute. I like that. You welcomed it. You got to stand for a minute. Sometimes we can think back of when we got baptized and we haven't been to church since. We sometimes think about when we accepted Jesus in our life, but then we don't go to church since. We say the right things, but we don't continue to live in it. The world gets in the way. The world gets in the way. The world has many distractions. And we get so involved in these distractions that we don't seek God. Sometimes people think, well, I don't really need God. I'm here to tell you, you do. Here's why. I'm a hospice chaplain. I sit with people as they're dying. They start talking about, man, I need God. When you get to that point, you're ready to meet your maker, it becomes real. It just gets realer than real. And those people are like, I, I had some people tell me, I went to church and I was a deacon, but I didn't live for him. I went to church and I held the door. I went to church and I passed out bulletins and I said the right things, but I didn't really live in a relationship with him. One of the biggest questions I like to ask, do you know that God loves you? The most common response I get is, I hope so. But if you're living for God, if you're seeking him, and you're living for him, and I say, you know God loves you, you're going to say, yes, I know he does, and I love him too. You don't have to hope. You know. But sometimes we say, I hope because we know we're not serving him. Amen? Let's just be honest. We know when we're not doing it. We can fool ourselves, we can fool our friends, and we can fool others, but we cannot fool God. He sees through everything. And all he's saying is just, seek me. So he says, once you believe it, once you receive it, he says, stand firm in it. He said, it's the good news. Watch this. It's the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. You have to continue in it. 
it's a struggle. It is. A, I, we have probably 15 to 18 people. We have a, an online Bible plan. Sometimes people read it every week. Sometimes people don't read it. It is a struggle. We all understand the struggle. But that's the beauty of this church. No one's ever pointing the finger that says, you didn't read this week. We all know it's a struggle. We all know we struggle. We all know that we need help. And we continue to love encourage and stand with our brothers and sisters and that's why the scripture tells us you welcomed it then you got to stand firm in it it's the good news that saves you if you continue to believe you see believe is just not a one-time action believe is not coming up here and saying i believe i'm getting baptized i believe belief is a verb belief says i know god can bless me if i shut my mouth so i shut my mouth I know God will bless me if I give back to him, so I give back to him. I know God will bless me if I seek him, so I seek him. I know God will bless me if I talk to him, so I talk to him. See, that's what belief means. But sometimes we don't give. Sometimes we don't read. We don't pray. We don't seek him because we believe with a thought process, not a heart process. But he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. and He delivered me from all my fears. If you seek him, if you believe him, things change. Now watch this in 1 Corinthians 15, 3. I pass on to you what was most important and what has also been passed on on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture says. Jesus did it for our sins. He did it for you and I. He knows we can't do it on our own. No matter how hard we try, we still fail. No matter what good intents we have, we still struggle. But that's why he died, so he can forgive us. You all can be forgiven. You might think, well, I did too much. I can't be forgiven. No, he's already did it. All you got to do is accept him. All you got to do is open your heart and believe. All you got to do is ask him to come in your life. You see, a lot of times people try to understand him without accepting him. Can't do it. But once you accept him, all, that sudden, all of a sudden that spiritual light comes on. And you're like, oh, now I get it. Now I understand. I've seen people get baptized and their whole life changes. They thought they knew what they were doing, but once they surrendered to God and, and got baptized, everything changed. It was that aha moment. Like, ah, oh, now I get it. Watch this, speaking of Jesus in verse 4. He was buried when he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. So let's process this. Jesus came to earth as man. He was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose. Death, burial, resurrection, simple. You see, sometimes we try to be so educational. We try to sometimes be so smart. It's simple. Jesus' is death, burial, and resurrection. I had a pastor once, he told me, when you preach, preach Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's all that matters. You see, we complicate it. We complicate it. And what we do is we complicate it, and everybody's like, well, I don't know what to believe. You ever had that thought? Well, this church is saying this, these people are saying this, these people say, I don't know what to believe. There's so many denominations out there. There's so many different ways. What's the truth? The truth is Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he was resurrected to save you and I. That's it. That's it. Once you do that, the Holy Spirit then directs you. Maybe you shouldn't do that no more. I, people that come to this church, they will let you know. I don't ever go and say, hey, don't do that. Don't do that, unless it's something personal. But I don't say, you need to stop this or you need to stop that. I don't do that. I just said, just walk with Jesus. Jesus taps him on the shoulder and says, hey, maybe you should change your language. Maybe you should change your thought process. Maybe you should stop watching that show. Maybe you should stop scrolling on Instagram, Snapchat, and Instagram, and Facebook, and all those things. Maybe you should stop doing that a little bit and start reading a little bit more. I don't tell people that. They come and tell me that's what God spoke to them. It's all about the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I can't tell you what to do. If I tell you, if I had told everybody, hey, stand on one foot, raise a hand, and say hallelujah, and everybody did it, that doesn't mean you're any closer to God. But if you open your heart and say, Jesus, come in my life, accept me, forgive me, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, maybe you shouldn't drink so much. Maybe you shouldn't lie so much. 
Maybe you shouldn't be so mean and so nasty. Maybe you shouldn't have such a pride issue. That's the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. But you don't get that instruction until you accept him. Remember, it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He died to save you. He died because he loved you. He died because he wants better for you. Does anybody ever think about what's my life going to be? Where's my future going to go? What if I told you he's already got it planned? What if I told you he's already got it mapped out? All you got to do is follow him, and he opens those doors. Will you stumble? Yeah, you'll stumble. And I'll stumble right there with you. But he's there to pick us up. He's there to forgive us. He's there to continue walking with us. But what was it all? It was all done by the death, burial, and resurrection. That's why we do baptism. That's why we do baptism. You get that picture on the screen. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb. He rose on the third day. That's why we do baptism. As we do baptism, you stand in this tank as a person that says, I need Jesus. You stand in this tank saying, I need something better. And when you go under the water, it's like you went into the grave. And then you raise up to walk with the Spirit, to be new and different. You got to say, if you like chocolate chip cookies, you come out of there, you'll still like chocolate chip cookies. I mean, things don't change like that. If you have a broken arm and you go down and you come up, you'll still have a broken arm. But God gives you the peace to get through it. He walks with you to get through it. It's all about accepting Jesus. So this morning, we have some baptisms. We have some baptisms. I forgot to mention, all those who want to be baptized, you can go get changed. Those who are already changed, you can come sit up here in the front row. No one ever wants to be that first one to move. Well, Megan says, I'm going to do it. And we have some people that's going to get changed. I was inspired by these two right here. These two came to me last Sunday. And they're like, I want to be plugged into the church. I want to get baptized. I was touched. Briley, I pronounced that right? Briley came to me first and said, I want to get baptized. I talked to Megan. She says, I want to do it too. And I'm not, I'm not trying to highlight anything, but I'm going to tell you why they were here. Erin, she's been praying and praying and praying. We have a group of consistent believers who come every week. And every week they're praying for somebody. Every week they're praying. Why are they praying? Not because they want Megan or Briley to change. They're praying because they know God loves them. And they only want something better for them. So I give it to you. The, the, if you're here today, you're probably here because someone loves you enough to pray for you and wants you to be here and invited you to be here. So I, I give all the credit to the church and the new people that we have here and how the church is going. They are desperately seeking and praying because it's changed their life, and they know the power of God and what it can do. So I tell you what, I'll go ahead and pray. To end the service.